Okay guys, welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk about uh, survival tins and kind of my thinking and my rationality. And we're going to, in the end, take a look at this. But real quick, I wanted to discuss, uh, many people make Altoid tin survival kits. And this one is empty, but it's a Altoids tin that I spray painted. So I've made a couple of these in the past. My issue is, while being very compact and lightweight, for an EDC bag or something like that, or something to throw in your back pocket, they just don't hold a lot of stuff. And uh, for not that much more size, you can have a far more effective kit or have better tools and implements. So, <clears throat> so while I understand kind of the reasoning, you can get these tins for dirt cheap and uh, they're very small, I'm not a big fan of them personally. And uh, I've made them in the past though, and it's kind of a fun project. So we'll set that one up there. This is kind of my minimum size. So this is a Sokoa uh, aluminum box. And it's kind of an ex expensive box, but it's really durable. And I've gone through this before, and I'll leave a link to that video. So in today's video, we're going to talk about this. It's made by Essie. And it's their survival tin, their empty survival tin. So they do make a pre-made kit, but I decided to forego that and I just bought the empty tin. It was about $14 or $15 on Amazon. And uh, I wanted to just buy the tin and make my own kit around it. So real quick, before we take these other tins off the table, I just wanted to show you a size per perspective. Um, quite a bit bigger than Neltoid's tin. It's quite a bit bigger than both of these. And as you'll see, to some that might seem like a downside because there's no way you're going to fit this in a pocket. Maybe fitting it in a cargo pocket, but it's just kind of heavy and it would get in the way. What this is for, um, the reason I made it specifically is to keep in my get home bag. Um, so I can keep, keep kind of a last ditch survival kit and then that way it cleans up the rest of my get home bag just to store the things I'll most likely need, you know, food, water, and clothing. Um, so that's why I made this kit. But, uh, you know, the applications are kind of endless. Depending on what type of bag you carry on a daily basis, you could keep this in an EDC bag. You could keep this under your front seat. Uh, you could put this in a, a bug out bag or a never coming home bag. Uh, just to have, you know, bare essentials with you if you lose everything else. So, before I open it up, <clears throat> I just put some 3 inch wide Gorilla Tape on the bottom. Not a lot of tape, but this can be used for band-aids. I've used it, you know, if I get a little nick on my hand. You know, duct tape, Gorilla Tape has a lot of uses, and I have more tape inside the kit, but I wanted to maximize this. Keep in mind, that this is a mess tin that you can use to cook or boil water, so on and so forth. So if you were to do that over like a fire, you need to remove this tape, but you could save it, um, certainly. Or just, you know, use it up or who knows. So the next thing and the thing to keep in mind with this kit is the lid doesn't really lock on. And I'm going to probably modify it in the future. I think I can bend some of these edges in just so it grips a little bit, but as it comes, it doesn't grip. So the next thing, I just have some shock cord, and that, if needed, you could maybe use that for other stuff. Uh, you could use rubber bands. I had rubber bands, but they were kind of thin and chintzy, and I was nervous that they'd break. Um, you could tie paracord. You could use a nylon webbing, kind of whatever. I had some shock cord laying around, and it's just really easy, and it it locks in. So um, now getting to the good part. So I'm going to open this kit up. Uh, I'm warning you, there's a lot of stuff in this kit. I'm kind of going to go a little in depth uh, behind my reasonings. Uh, so maybe save this video for another day when you have a little more time. You can just enjoy the whole video or you can kind of skip through, but you might miss some critical stuff. So the first thing I did is I polished the top. It doesn't come like this, and it, I didn't do a perfect job, 
but to use as an impromptu signaling device. And then I polish the inside, but then I uh, just taped a signal mirror to the top. It's a really thin, shiny piece of metal, and the other side of this mirror has a protective film so that the side that I want to use is facing upward and it's protected. But this side, you could even, you know, if you had to use this quick, you could open this kit and signal. And then, uh, I mean, this tape is just here to hold the mirror, but you could use this again to use as a band aid or something. So uh, I wanted to kind of maximize this piece. And the other thing is, I don't know how much cooking you'll be doing, but you could use this as a little plate or a frying pan, but it is pretty small. So I'll set that off to the side. So the first thing is going to be a little weird. Um, I threw this in because I had it, because I had a little extra space in this kit. And my rationing, or my rationale, I guess, for putting this in is I could use this to hold some water. Now it's not completely watertight. It's waterproof, but it will leak through the seams. And I could probably put a dry bag in here. Instead of this, I just didn't have one. And I didn't want to spend a lot of stuff, or a lot of money on this kit. I was trying to use what I already had. So just a granite gear, three liter, <clears throat> yellow color. So this can also be used as a signal flag. As a dump pouch, you could thread your belt through here. And if you gather stuff or you want to bring extra stuff with you, you could just toss it all in here. So the other reason I put this in is if you want, or if you need to, you can just dump this whole kit into here. It won't be as organized, but if you need to use the tin, um, or as you take stuff out and you don't want to lose it, toss it in there. It will kind of be hard to lose this bright colored bag. I didn't have one, but what I would actually do is try and find like a blue one. I don't know about you, I am colorblind, but in nature, at least where I live, I don't see a lot of blue, you know, in the woods. So a lot of people think orange and yellow are better, but the thing is in fall, you know, yellow, orange, and red, the changing of the leaves, at least where I live, the forest gets really vibrant. So uh, if I would have had a blue one, I would have put a blue one in. But yellow is pretty bright. Um, but again, kind of multi-use. It's a storage device made to hold water. Um, you know, lots of uses. And yeah, so the next thing, I'm not going in any particular order, is just a small pencil. I have some right in the rain paper in this kit. So this is if you had to leave your vehicle or you got to a trailhead or something and, I don't know, you were on the move, you could leave a note. Or if you made camp, you know, you could write headed northwest or, or something like that. Um, so a pencil. Um, this is a Petzl E-Light. And this isn't super common, but I think it's really cool. Petzl is a pretty high-end brand when it comes to headlamps. And the reason I like it is it because it's so compact, it has this drawstring. And what I've done before hiking at night is I'll attach this to my wrist. Well, I flipped it. I put it on the wrong way, but you can rotate it like that. Or if you're doing something tying knots, it doesn't put out a lot of light, but enough to, uh, you know, get work done. Or if you had to travel at night, it has red flashing, uh, red and stuff like that. It takes 220... 32 button cell batteries. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, string or rope. Uh, I put two different types in here uh, just for different applications. So this is orange micro paracord and it's not super strong but this is about 60 to 70 feet and you can see it doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, the thing is I didn't I just hastily coiled this so if you go to use it, it gets tangled up pretty easy. But I threw that in there just to have a lot of utility type cord. And then this is a number 36 bank line, tarred bank line, and this is 30 feet. And I believe this gauge of bank line has a breaking strength of around 300 pounds, I think. Um, but yeah, number 36 bank line. So I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to talk about this in a second. Um, but just a couple more things, an emergency whistle with a lanyard on it. So you can, you know, once you get lost or whatever, you can throw this around your neck, um, just so it's on your person in case you hear someone, you can, uh, start whistling distress signals. 
Uh, this is a little piece of tenacious tape, and it's pretty much clear repair tape. And I've used this to repair thermarests. You can repair, you know, waterproof rain jackets. It's really sticky, waterproof. It nearly sticks to everything. And it's not a lot, but it didn't really take up any space. So I threw that in there. This is about 30 feet, 20 or 30 feet of flagging tape. And then I threw a couple safety pins in. Safety pins have a lot of uses. But my thinking is putting it with the flagging tape, you know, right when I get lost, I could take a couple pieces off and safety, safety pin them to my hat. I tend to wear like an earth-toned hat. So I could safety pin a couple flags to my hat. And as I'm walking and as the wind's blowing, it's going to kind of wave in the wind. If you have more of a camouflage type backpack, hiking backpack with you, that blends in easily. You could put a couple flags on there. And then this to mark trails or to leave, uh, you know, if you get to a Y in the road, you can signal you went one way or the other. Um, you can use this also as a binding implement. Um, but I have other stuff in there to do that. But flagging tape, very inexpensive, very effective. This is something that uh, I threw in because I had space. Um, there's probably better alternatives, but I had a big bag of tea lights. So I threw two in, and they don't take up a lot of space. And, you know, for to warm your hands up, they don't put out a lot of heat. But just to have a candle, you know, sometimes you want just a little bit of ambient light, but you don't want to start a big campfire. So just two tea lights. They don't, they're really light. They don't take up a ton of space. Um, but I could certainly see why someone would choose not to have those in this kit. So this, I didn't pack a lot of medical gear in here, but you know when I'm out in the woods, uh, I tend to just do weird things. You know, abrade my knuckles on uh, a tree or something like that. So I just have some triple antibiotic cream, some hydrocortisone cream, some alcohol prep pads, which could double as like fire starters, and like five just band aids. In this little bag, again, it doesn't take up a ton of space. I have some ibuprofen, some Benadryl is back there, some aspirin. Um, not a lot, but, you know, again, it might get you through a tough situation or make, you know, if you have to tolerate some pain, it might make it a little easier. Or if you get an allergic reaction, you know. So this is kind of a mini fire kit. Uh, this kit isn't really designed for camping or uh, sheltering in place so it's not like I'm going to be starting a ton of fires but this is a spark wheel I find it a lot more effective than those very small miniature fire steels it only requires one hand to use you don't need to use a striking implement with it and think of it as a big lighter without fuel that throws the sparks a little farther and then I have five tinder quicks I found these to be one of my favorite very compact reliable fire starters there's a lot of fire starters out there though that you could use. I use these Tinder Quicks. In this bag, I packed it, not super necessary, but I packed it in a little plastic bag. And this is a Nightcore tube uh, flashlight. And it might be waterproof, um, but just for extra security, I packed it in a little waterproof bag. And then I have a second way to start a fire just a miniature Bic lighter. Again, Bic lighters uh, are semi-waterproof. I packed it in a plastic bag just for a little extra protection. So this right here is about 10 to 15 feet of just brass wire. Um, more for repairing stuff than for snaring animals. I know a lot of people put wire in this type of copper thin wire to snare animals. I've tried it when I was a boy. It's not super effective, but you know, I do have that option with this kit, but this is more for repairing stuff. Uh, sometimes, you know, tape isn't strong enough, so you can bind it, lash stuff with wire. Um, you can also make this, if you wanted, like a bale handle. Um, you could poke a hole in this if you wanted to hang it above a fire, for example. Um, but just wire because it's not, you know, it doesn't really melt or whatever, so you can use it around heat sources. But there's a lot more... Uh, uses on just touching the surface. So <clears throat> this is a miniature pen. I don't know who makes it. It might be Zebra. But it's 
I don't know where I found this, but it's a very small ballpoint pen. Um, so you could write notes on your hand. Uh, you know, you can't really do that with a pencil, but if you're headed in a certain direction, um, in case you forget, you can write notes on your arm. I have some paper in the bottom of this that you can use this with. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory, but that's just kind of my reasoning for that. Um, for Aquamira tablets, I have a couple more water tablets, but this is um, to treat water so I don't get dehydrated so I can have a clean drinking source. <clears throat> so something I put in here, which many people would say is overkill, but I put a base plate compass in here. So many people in these small kits, they put a little button compass. Um, the reason I don't like those are one, I found even the higher end ones aren't super durable. They're not really easy to use. They're not super accurate. But the biggest thing is because they're so small, I've lost at least a few of those out in the woods and they tend to be black. You know, it's some company needs to come out with a button compass that's blaze orange or that's bright blue and not black. Um, but I put a base plate compass in here uh, just because I had the space. Um, it's more accurate. It's easier to hold. It does have a magnifying glass. It has some measurements, some map scales, and it's not a super high end. It's a Silva, uh, Silva Explorer made in Finland. <clears throat> and I've had this for a long, long, long time. And, uh, you can see there's no bubbles in there. And, you know, some people don't like Silva compasses. Some people prefer Sunto or Brunton. Um, but this one, I'll just keep using until it forms some bubbles, but it's been fairly durable, but it, again, it's kind of a basic compass. So this is just some duct tape for, again, band-aids, <clears throat> repairing stuff. Uh, you can write notes on this and tape it to a tree or to your vehicle. You could put this on the side of your vehicle if you need to leave your vehicle and say, I'm headed in this direction, for example. You can use this with the paper I have to you know, tape a note up somewhere. To let you know search and rescue know which way you're headed um, and then some more water tablets these ones are called aqua tabs so then these i'm not going to undo them but they're two they're called world pack stand-up bags and i bought them on amazon and they hold about a liter to a liter and a half of water and <clears throat> they're you know, people could say, just use a Ziploc bag. These are actually meant, I believe, for companies that do water testing to take water samples. I believe that's what they're for. But two of them, uh, with, uh, I marked the, the measurements, you know, so then that's kind of important when you're using water pills. So you don't, you know, so you can filter the, or purify the right amount of water. Very compact. I packed two just because they're, they're fairly durable but that way I can gather twice as much water, for example, or if one breaks, I have a second one. So I'm not a big fan of space blankets, but uh, I put one in here for, you know, a quick down and dirty shelter for, you know, preventing hypothermia and a multitude of reasons. So this one is just a Walmart brand Col Coglins, Coglins, space blanket that was in a I got for Christmas one year or something like that so I decided to throw it in but unlike many um kits I actually have a second one so this is an S no adventure medical kits heat sheets and it's slightly bigger and it's orange and some people say it's more durable I've it's a little more durable but it's not bulletproof but again I could be in a party of two Maybe we both need a blanket or I want to use one to make a little shelter and the second one to bundle up in. So I have two space blankets. The reason I have two is just where I live. We get a lot of cold weather. There's a lot of water. There's a lot of chance for, you know, getting dunked in water and risking hypothermia. So I thought it was important to have two. This I just kind of threw in. It's a derma razor. And uh, I've seen people throw in like razor blades, straight razor blades. My issue is they're really hard to use effectively. So I like these ones because they're very compact. You can get like a big pack of them for not that much. And you actually have a handle. Uh, 
it's not the most durable blade you know you're not going to really be doing whittling or carving with this but <clears throat> you know for cutting rope or maybe for medical emergencies you might need to use this I, you know alcohol prep pads you could sterilize the blade so the next thing is two squares of aluminum foil <clears throat> this is 18 inch by two feet I believe quite a bit of foil but when you fold it right it's really thin I packed two separate ones uh, this has a multitude of uses signaling cooking you know you know making impromptu boiling devices even though I already have a pot that I could use to clean water for example or make a tea um, but I threw this in because just to have kind of a backup the the other thing I was going to put in here, and I saw this in John McCann's Build the Perfect Survival Kit book. What he does in some kits is he uses a baking pan that's about yay big, and he folds it, those disposable ones, and he, he folds it up and it packs very flat. And it's a lot thicker. Well, it's thicker and it, it has rigidity to it. So if you need to boil snow or melt snow, for example, you just undo it and now you have a cooking vessel. And I was going to put one of those in this kit, but the thing is, I already have a boiling uh, or a pot, okay? So that was that reasoning. And then at the very bottom <clears throat> is three pieces of right in the rain paper. It's four by six, it's out of a four by six notebook, and then all I just had to do is clip the corners so they fit in. They don't take up any space, they <clears throat> don't really weigh anything. Again, for writing notes for rescuers, for writing notes uh, to help you later on and stuff like that. So that's the kit. As you can see, you can fit a lot of stuff in here. I think it's a fairly effective kit. That's the kit. As you can see, I think everything's on frame. Quite a bit of gear to help you through a sticky situation. So the last thing I wanted to cover... And I think a lot of you guys might find this interesting. I know the video is running long and I apologize, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed it this far. The last thing I wanted to cover is the cutting instrument, so I guess you could include that. And that's what I have. Now, I had a lot of other choices. Swiss Army Knife, Swiss Army Knife Farmer, Gerber. Um, so, I think... This video, this discussion will make the video a little longer, but I think a lot of you guys will enjoy this. So I want to cover why <clears throat> I put this one in. And personally, I don't know if it's the right choice. So the first thing is, um, <clears throat> so the first one I want to cover is something I carry on my keys. And I've seen a lot of people pack this. This is a Leatherman Squirt PS4. My reasoning is a lot of different outdoor activities I do, whether it's snowshoeing, snowmobiling, four-wheeling, off-roading, cross-country skiing, hiking, camping, so on and so forth, I tend to get there in my vehicle and I take my keys with me. So these are already going to be in the pocket and I already have this, so why pack another one in a kit? The other thing is on a daily basis, I tend to carry some type of Swiss Army knife and a multi-tool. So... I didn't go super heavy on the knives in the kit because my rationale is I'm already going to have some knives and some cutting implements with me. I want to talk through uh, just a couple things to keep in mind. So the first one, this is one option, it's called the Leatherman Freestyle, and it's very compact, but my issue is it has a knife blade and it has a pair of wire cutters and pliers, and does this one have tweezers? No, I don't think this one has tweezers. So that's it right so it's for its weight and for its size it takes up you don't get a lot out of it right so you know this an old standby Gerber M400 and it's compact it's lightweight it's thin so you have wire cutters and pliers can openers bottle openers scissors uh, screwdrivers and then you have a knife the thing is I don't like this knife that much it's you don't have a lot of cutting edge. <clears throat> a 
So my biggest issue with this is because for its size, it's missing something semi-critical, a wood saw. So uh, I didn't do that one. I could do a Leatherman Skeletool, knife blade, uh, pliers, and a screwdriver, but again, no wood saw. So these two, I considered putting one of these Swiss Army knives in. And they are quite a bit lighter and more compact, but the thing is in this kit I did have the space to choose something bigger. But Swiss Army knife is going to be a little more compact than a full-size multi-tool. And the cool thing with this, this is the Farmer, probably my favorite Swiss Army knife. It has a wood saw and a very effective one and a cutting blade, screwdriver, can opener, bottle opener, um, and that's about it. But, I mean, very good knife. This is just about the same. This is the Swiss Army Knife Hiker. And then one additional thing this has is it has two blades. You know, in case you did something stupid and you broke one of the blades, you still have a second one. So you have two blades, which is advantageous, and then you have the tweezers and the, the toothpick. But my reasoning and my rationale is I already carry one of these on a daily basis. So I'll already have one of those with me. Part of the reason I packed this is because this is my least <clears throat> favorite multi-tool, which will come to a surprise a lot of people because a lot of people like this. I'm not a huge fan, but for a multi-tool, a full-size multi-tool, it's fairly slim. It has a ferro cerium rod, so just a, an additional way to start fire in case you lost everything else. It has a little whistle slash uh, diamond sharpening rod. It has a knife, and this one you'll see is a combo edge, but again, I'm carrying a full straight edge knife already, a pen knife. So this is serrated, but uh, you know you still have some usable blade up there. And then it has wire cutters and pliers if you wanted to use the tin to cook with you know or you wanted to use this as a frying pan you could pull it out of the fire uh, you can use the plier, pliers for a lot of things but my kind of reasoning for using this one is while being kind of a compact full-size multi-tool if that makes sense it has a wood saw now it's not super effective but I wanted a knife that also had a another way to you know if you wanted to cut some small sticks to you know make something and then it has the screwdriver bits it has a cap lifter you know in case you have some uh, choice beverages with you and then it has a punch all um, right in right in there and the screwdriver bits so I wanted to cover fixed blade knives <clears throat> so I wanted to cover fixed blade knives real quick and why I didn't include one so I don't own that many compact itty bitty fixed blade knives that would fit in the kit and I was trying to use stuff I already had. I don't want to buy a lot of extra stuff. And this is the only one that it would actually fit in the kit. And it's the more Eldris. My issue with this is it's a, it's a decent knife, a neck knife or an EDC type knife, but the blade is shorter than for example, Swiss Army Knife, right? So it is fixed blade, but you have a shorter knife. Um, the other thing is the handle, while being comfortable, is fairly wide, so that's going to take up a lot of space in the tin. And uh, I've kind of come to the point where if I'm going to pack a, if I'm going to pack a fixed blade knife, I want it to have a, a little bit longer a blade than something small like this. Hopefully you enjoyed that quick discussion on knives, and I understand there's a lot of other suitable knives, but the thing is I don't have those, <clears throat> and I wanted to use things I already had. So, the last thing I just wanted to cover real quick, and this video kind of demonstrated it well, is there's no way you could fit all this stuff in one of these. So I understand the reasoning behind this, but when you look at all all this extra stuff that I can take in not that bigger of a tin, it kind of proves my point a little bit. So I'm going to leave a link to this tin. I like it a lot. 
um, fairly, it's like $15 on Amazon. It's fairly durable. It weighs only a few ounces. You can boil water. You can melt snow. You can um, collect water. You can cook food if you caught like a trout or something like that. Um, and then I like the fact that this can double as the a signal mirror plate. So hopefully you guys like this video. I had a lot of fun filming it and kind of explaining what's in it and why I put it in there. And, and keep in mind, Essie makes a kit very similar to this that's pre-made. So if you don't want to go to the hassle and you don't have all this small stuff to put in here, I believe it costs $180, but it has a lot of similar stuff. Plus it comes with an SE Candrew, which is about the size of this knife. It comes with a Swiss Army knife. I think it might be this exact Swiss Army knife. It comes with a lot of similar stuff. So that's another option. It's $180 to $190, but it's all put together for you. And I think it even comes with like a fishing kit. So this video has ran pretty long, but I think a lot of you guys will enjoy it, especially if you're thinking about putting together a survival tin. Um, now I get to spend the next, you know, 10, 20 minutes repacking this the way that I unpacked it. So if you guys like this video, go back to my homepage, watch some of my current videos. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. If you have any tips, questions, or maybe additions or different stuff I could put in this tin, leave that in the comments below. 